Well, hello, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Pastor Amanda Banda, and wow, Amanda Banda. I know people are like, how do you really say your... If I'm at the doctor's office, I introduce myself as Amanda Banda, but I like to say Amanda Banda, like Amanda Banda. However y'all want to say it, I will accept that. Like I said, as long as there's no curse words before that, I'm good, y'all. I'm so excited to be here and to be able to connect with you, my family and I, my husband George, Davin, Leandra, and Brennan, our kiddos. And again, I look forward to being able to connect with you, and I feel like y'all have probably been hearing my name so much and finally can put a face in person to a name, uh, and we're excited to be worshiping with you. Uh, but as we get started today, we're going to pray for our basic training camp staff. So if we can get all of the staff up here, we're going to pray for y'all. As we send them out, they have a crazy uh, half a week ahead. We know that so much work and prayers and preparation has gone into this, and we're just excited for all that we know that God is going to do with them. Amen. Friends, if you would just extend a hand as we, a blessing as we pray over our staff and, and join us in, in praying over them today. Awesome God, we are so grateful, Lord, for the people who are standing here before us, Lord. We're grateful that they have decided, Lord, to give their gifts over to you, Lord. We pray that, that you would continue to use them, Lord, in, in the ways that only you know you can, Lord, in the ways that sometimes maybe they not even realize yet that you are going to use them, Lord. We pray and know that you have already begun a work in them. And, Lord, we pray for protection over our staff. Lord, as they face the different elements that are coming this week, Lord, we pray for, for wisdom and knowledge, God, that comes only from you, Lord. And Father God, we pray for, for the hearts of the children that are going to be coming to camp, God. And Lord, we know that, again, you have already begin, pr begun preparing a way for the message that will be instilled in them, Lord. And Father God, we pray for protection and peace over everyone that's involved in, in basic training camp this coming week, God, and, and that wisdom would just flow and that your spirit of love and compassion and giving would just be so evident in that place, Lord. All these things we pray in your son's precious name. Amen. Amen. Let's give them a round of applause and thank them for their willingness to serve. Amen. Y'all can be seated. Thank you. So before we get started, we have a couple of announcements that we'd like to share with you. Um, Shields Elementary School Supply Drive. Um, if you'd like to see the bulletin that has exactly the information that you need of, of what are the items that are being collected for Shields Elementary, uh, the items can be dropped off. There's two large black collection bins that are located in the Crossroads or Wesley Hall that you can leave your items in, or if you need to just drop them off at church during the week, we'll take them. So be sure to do that as well. And we just want to thank you in advance for uh, supporting and helping the students, aka Sharks of Shield Elementary. The deadline to turn in all school supplies for this, uh, for this ministry is July 31st. Uh, let's see. Next up, we have Monday, July 19th at 5.30 p.m. That's going to be cookies and coffee with Pastor Wade. I know he's excited about being able to connect with people. If you're new or new-ish is what I've been told, you're welcome to join us. Or if you just want to come hang out and meet new people, um, you've been here a while, uh, join us. Join us for some fun. I'm thinking about checking it out, too. As, as long as my schedule's open, it sounds like a great time of just fellowship and getting to know people and getting to know this church in a new, in a new way. Uh, um, then also, oh, that's me. Uh, so at Liberty, Co Liberty Coffee House on Tuesdays at 10 a.m., I will be there. I try to get there a little early. Sometimes be people beat me there this past Sunday. Join me at 10 a.m., Liberty Coffee House on Tuesdays. I'll be there for a couple of months every Tuesday at 10 a.m. And I'd love to get to connect with you. If that's not a good time for you, message me, email me. My, my information is on the website. And we can connect another time. Uh, but I do love some cafecito and conversation. I just enjoy uh, that special special time of fellowship as well. So I invite you to join us at that time, uh, to join me at that time, and, and let's get to know each other and our brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. Uh, so those are our announcements for today, friends. Uh, I pray that um, you're able to enjoy worship and just allow the Spirit of God to flow in you and through you. Amen. Amen. Church, if you would please stand and join us as we worship our Lord and King Jesus Christ. Never fail, you're steadfast. 
Your promises are true. You're faithful. You cover all my sins with forgiveness. My eyes are seeing your ways. Your goodness. Love and faithfulness. Love and faithfulness me. We behold your glory. Righteousness and peace. Kiss. never fail your love will never fail your steadfast your promises are true your faithful you cover all my sins with forgiveness my eyes have seen your way see your goodness in the land of the living we'll see your goodness in the land of the living we'll see your goodness we'll see your goodness in the land of the living and heaven is all around us heaven is So church, here in a few minutes, Wade's going to come down and he's preaching a sermon today. He's going to be talking about division and about Christ as the the reconciler of all people. And uh, I was reading through the scripture and I felt like God led me to this song. And I'm not completely sure why, but just keep that in mind as you're singing today. You're the God of this city, you're the King of these people, you're the Lord of this nation, you are. You're the light in this darkness, you're the hope to the hopeless, you're the peace to the restless, you are. There is no one. There is no one like our God. There is no one like you, God. Greater things of 
yet to come. There are greater things are still to be done in this city. Greater things have yet to come. The greater things are still to be done here. You're the Lord. You're the Lord of creation. The creator of all things. You're the king above all kings. You are. You're the strength and the weakness. You're the love to the broken. You're the joy and the sadness. You are. There is no one like our God. There is no one like our God. Greater things, greater things have yet to come, and greater things are still to be done in this city. Where glory shines from hearts alive with praise for you and love for you in this city. Yet to come, the greater things are still to be done in this city. Greater things have yet to come, and greater things are still to be done here. There. no one like our God. There is no one like our God. No, there is no one like you, God. There is no one like our God. There is no one like you, Church, if you want to be seated, you feel free to sit down. Uh, if you want to keep standing and worshiping, that's fine too. Um, I want everybody to bow their heads. Father God, we just thank you for bringing us here today, God, for another day, for the chance to come and worship you. God, we just thank you for today. I ask that you will... Be with Pastor Wade as he comes up to speak here in a few minutes, God. That you will open our ears, allow us to hear from you today, God. God, I ask that you will clear away any distraction, anything that's that's keeping us from, from hearing from you today, God. Help us to lay down anything that, uh, that we're thinking about and not listening, God. your son's holy and precious name we pray. Amen. You are a refuge. You have no borders. When I was a stranger knocking at your door, you took me in. With no questions 
and no conditions. When I was a sinner running from your grace, you called me friend. There were no outsiders to your love. We are all welcome, there's grace enough. When I have wandered, Lord, your cross is the open door. There are no outsiders, I'm not in. the harbor in every tempest when my soul was shipwrecked tossed upon the waves you calm the storm you are the father there are no orphans every tribe and nation gathered in your arms sings with one voice sings with one voice there are no outsiders to your love. We are all welcome, there's grace enough. When I have wandered, Lord, your cross is the open door. There are no outsiders, I'm not in. I was poor, I was thrown upon your shores, I was homeless and afraid, till I heard you call my name, now I'm ransomed, I'm restored, I'm resurrected, I am yours, I am loved, yes I belong, oh my soul has found this home, there are no I love that. No Outsiders Band, wonderful job. Will and I didn't get much of a chance to, to spend a lot of time together. We, had a, 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 we both worked on a funeral this week and had lots of things going on. I come in uh, and, and I hear this song, There Are No Outsiders, and I think there is only God could have directed the fact that that was the song that was chosen just before uh, the scripture and, and message today. Because, you know, there's one of the things... One of the things that I just love about the church today uh, is that there never seems to be any division among Christians. We just seem to agree on everything. Is anybody awake? Anybody at all? Um, well, you know, th th that, that's, that's one of the things that this, this there are no outsiders is such a beautiful message it's such it, it really gets to the heart of something that Paul was talking to the Ephesians about because unlike today where we get along about everything in the church the church at Ephesus had a pretty big divide going on and it we're going to talk about that of course you know I'm joking when I say that that there are no divisions in the church today we find that, that if there's if the church does something well it's that we find things to be divided about these days. Uh, but if you can imagine 
for a moment Ephesus. Ephesus is full of Gentiles. Gentiles are basically just non-Jews. And we've got Jews and Gentiles worshiping together. What could go wrong? We read, did I bring my glasses? It's the glasses that I stole from somebody in Ignite who left them on one of those tables weeks ago that I found that seemed to be the only glasses I have now. So if we go, if we turn to Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 2, we go to verse 11. It says, So then remember that at one time you Gentiles, you were Gentiles by birth, called the uns- uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at the time without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and stranger to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace in his flesh. He has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall that is the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with with his commandments and ordinances, that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him, both of us have access to one spirit, to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. When I was in seminary, I did a very in-depth breakdown of Ephesians. Uh, when I say in depth, I mean it was painfully in depth. Um, uh, preparing for the message today, I went back and I and, and I pulled out that big folder that I had of all my Ephesians writing, and it was thick. and And I was thumbing through, thinking, "Okay, I'll find something in here to relate to this reading from Ephesians to talk about uh, in the message today." And 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 I f- I wrote thirty eight pages on five verses of that's that's what a poor seminary student I was it took me 38 pages to break down five verses of scripture ain't nobody got time for that so I thumbed through all this Ephesians documentation that I had written and 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 poured over these hundreds of pages skimming them really Uh, skimming these hundreds of pages that I had written about Ephesians, and I eventually came across what I had identified as what I thought was the key verse to the entire letter to the Ephesians. And it came just before this reading today. It came in chapter 2, verse 8, and it says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. Not a result of works so that you may boast. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is a gift of God. It's harder to, it's hard to imagine a fiercer divide than what was between the Jews and the Gentiles in Ephesus. Jews are chosen people of God They're in because of who they are. The Gentiles, the non-Jews, the Gentiles are in because of who Christ is. The Gentile Ephesians became part of this message of reconciliation, this inclusion in salvation at that time because of the grace and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. But divisions between Gentiles... And Jews continued, even even escalated in some ways. There raged this tension between the church and the synagogue. If we look at our contemporary congregations today, 
You're going to find separations of race, economics, gender, age, ethnicity. Ephesians talks about this dividing wall. It talks about aliens. When we look at the scripture, we have to at least think about who it is that we are willing to welcome and who it is that we tend to exclude from our fellowship. In Ephesians, Paul is talking about the dividing wall being broken down by Christ. Old divisions between insiders and outsiders have been knocked down, and sin's power to divide has ended in Christ Jesus. He says a new community is being formed. But this community is being formed not in the way that the world develops communities. It's a new way of of, of developing and forming a community. This community, this new community, doesn't discriminate in who it welcomes. This community is formed on the basis of who Christ is and what Christ has done for the world. Christ's nature is not one to divide. It's not one that builds walls to divide. Christ's nature is one to gather those who are near. Christ's nature is to gather those who are far, bring them into himself, and then send them out with that message of reconciliation, that good news of reconciliation. Think about how Jesus reached out to others. Think about the way in which Jesus reached out to others, the, the, the cultural barriers that Jesus crossed. He didn't let religious and political boundaries stop him from reaching out. Jesus embraced women, Samaritans, lepers, Gentiles, tax collectors, crazy naked dudes living on the outside of town. He welcomed them all into fellowship. I think about dinner church. I miss dinner church. Dinner church was a lot of work, but dinner church, I think, is where today's text meets us in many ways. For those of you that, that, that haven't been with us, uh, but maybe been with us for, for worshiping with us for less than a year or so, I'm going to kind of tell you about dinner church. Uh, we suspended dinner church due to COVID, um, but expect to have it back in September our plan is to bring it back the, the Wednesday uh, after Labor Day, I believe. But Dinner Church is a worship service that we held on Wednesdays, Wednesday evenings, in Wesley Hall, right through there, uh, our fellowship hall. And we served a meal. We gathered at tables for fellowship together. And during the meal, I would read scripture and, and uh, preach a brief message. We always celebrated Holy Communion together. We prayed for one another. Now, Dinner Church is not a a feeding ministry. It's a worship service that we held in the midst of table fellowship. And it was incredible. And it will be incredible again. Dinner Church is where people from all over Victoria gathered to worship God. And the diversity at these worship services was awesome. We'd have people that drove in to the church in their brand new Lexus, sitting down, eating and sharing and visiting and talking with someone who might be living in a 30-year-old van. We had people at dinner church with different ethnic backgrounds, people living in different economic conditions, people covered in tattoos. We had people there who had never so much taken a sip of champagne at a wedding toast, sitting next to and enjoying the fellowship with someone who might at that moment be struggling with drug or alcohol addiction. And get this, you all know that that, that we've got some prominent folks in our congregation. We even have a judge in our congregation. And, and as I was sitting thinking about this, I know that we've had people like a judge sitting next to and talking to someone who may have been released from jail that day. 
That's the type of diversity and divisions that Christ knocks down. What does all this have in common? All of these things have in common. Jesus has made peace with those who were once alienated from one another. There's peace among brothers and sisters established by the, reconcil by the, the reconciling death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Jesus is even now gathering this new community that he talks about in Ephesians. This new com community is continually being established. We're not always obedient to this message of reconciliation, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't be. Going back to the, to the church at Ephesus, there was that Jew and Gentile divide. Historically speaking, to give you some perspective, that's a very tough thing to get over. Imagine, imagine if you are a Jew going to worship right there beside the Gentiles that had for centuries been abused, uh, that, that the Gentiles had abused God's chosen people, Israel, for such a long time. Jews had fought so hard for their survival and suffered at the hands of Gentile tyranny. The Jews had been looked down upon by the Gentiles. And now, there they were on the Lord's day attempting to love Jesus with you. Jesus Christ had not only been the Messiah of the chosen people Israel. This Jesus Christ, the Savior, expanded the boundaries of God's realm and included the Gentiles. When I was preparing for this message today, there was this temptation to start trying to list all the divisions that are going on in the church, that are going on in the, de in the denomination, that are going on in Christianity as a whole. To talk about the unpleasantness that we experienced, uh, particularly with COVID, as we were trying to navigate COVID, and there were arguments and discussions about masks and distancing, and even now, to some degree, vaccinations and so forth. I thought ah, that would be a good ex example of how we can talk about coming together and, and reaching out to others and, and all of that. And I was thinking from this position of here I am and here everybody else is, how can I reach out to them to bring them in to me? And it hit me, it hit me deep when I realized that one of the great gifts of the Christian faith is not only to be able to see another as a dearly beloved child of God, but also to be able to see ourselves as the other. Sometimes, if we cannot see ourselves as the other, we can fall into what amounts to a, a patronizingly condescending person of privilege that's willing to grant a little bit of power to someone who is otherwise powerless. It's a bit too easy, I think, sometimes for people like me, who enjoys my position of, of privilege, to be able to pat myself on the back just because I've, I've offered a little bit of inclusion towards someone who might have less power than me. We ought to look upon others as Christ has looked upon us. Thursday night, Cindy and I almost didn't watch the 10 o'clock news. We usually watch the 10 o'clock news together. We almost didn't watch it. We were tired. We had a big day planned on Friday, and, uh, but I got a, an alert on my phone. Got that Crossroads Today app. Um, got that app and, and, and pulled it up, and, and it said uh, that a woman had been arrested for murder in Victoria. I thought, I got to see what that's about. So we, we, we turned on the news, and it was the lead story there. And when it came on, my heart sank. My jaw dropped as I saw the woman being escorted by the police officers on the, on the television. I turned to Cindy. I said, that's Keisha. We knew her. We worshiped with her. 
Before COVID, she had, she had worshipped with us just about every Wednesday at dinner church. I'd been in her home along with a couple of other church members. I felt sad. But I didn't just feel sad watching this. I felt betrayed. Betrayed by Keisha. Maybe by God. In some ways, I wondered if Keisha had been betrayed by me. I wondered if, if maybe her victim in an indirect way had been betrayed by me. And I thought, how can I, how can I pray for her? Well, we Christians believe that God, who early in humanity, most, most people viewed God as an enemy. Even if you read in the Old Testament, it, it, it seems like God is this powerful enemy many times and in many ways. So, so if we consider God this enemy from, from early on and recognize that God took on human flesh. We celebrate it every Christmas. God took on human flesh, became one of us, moved right in with us, love forgave and called his enemies, us, called his enemies to be his friends. And then he commands us to go out and welcome our enemies as God welcomes us in Christ. Now, I, know, I know this sermon is not going to rank among your top ten list of feel-good sermons of the year. But the truth is, God breaks down barriers, tough barriers, barriers that we're not capable of breaking down on our own. And God welcomes the other, even enemies. We're not called to create divisions or even revel in them as, as we've been doing, uh, it seems, over the past few election cycles. We're not called to create divisions. Divisions. When Jesus says, love your enemies, remember, God forgave us. God forgives us. And when Jesus says, love your enemies, it's like he's commanding us to forgive, as if to say to us, I know it's painful and costly and hard. I know because I have forgiven you. Now you try it. Reach across those barriers that Christ has broken down. What are those divides that have been so difficult for you to reach across? Where has judgment kept you from being welcoming? Where has privilege clouded your judgment from being able to, to, to be welcoming? It's, it's, it's clouded you to be able to, to see someone hurting. In what ways have you considered yourself a good Christian while looking down on someone? I hope that you have done better than I have. But I'm confident that we can all do better in Christ. Love one another, Jesus says. As I have loved you, love one another. Let's pray. Mighty God, we come to you today knowing that, that you are the one that breaks down barriers, knowing that you are the one that can bring us together with others and that can bring us together with those who consider us the others. Lord, it is in your mercy, it is in your reconciling and healing power that we ask that you come be among us so that we may be among your people. Lord, send us out. Send us out not looking for ways in which we are different, but ways in which we are all brothers and sisters in Christ. Give us the opportunity. Place before us the opportunity to remove those barriers, to reach across those barriers, the barriers that you have broken down and restore and rebuild and reconcile your one people. 
people you have called us to be. And Lord, I continue this prayer for basic training camp that all who attend may know that they are one in the ways that they may be different from one another, that they may be the same. Mighty God, when you say, let the children come to me, we know that these children have been placed in a position of not seeing or knowing or understanding boundaries, and we ask that you give us the courage to not erect those barriers in front of them so that they may live as a new people in you. Amen. Amen. Church, will you please stand and join us as we worship again?
cries out, deep cries out to you, deep cries out, deep cries out to you, deep cries out, we cry out to you, Jesus. Deep cries out, deep cries out to you, deep cries out, deep cries out to you, we cry out, we cry out to you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Man. I tell you what, if, uh, if the devil shows up at basic training camp, he's going to get a heck of a whooping, I think. <laughs> um, so I, I, I just got to say, as, as, uh, as we leave here today, uh, keep folks in your prayers. Uh, if you are interested in finding out a little bit more about how you can be connected to First United Methodist Church, come have cookies and coffee with me uh, tomorrow evening. It's, it's in this little bulletin. Whoop. Uh, don't pay attention to that. Uh, it's, in the, it's in the bulletin here. I uh, would love, especially if you're new or new-ish to First United Methodist Church, would love to have that opportunity to connect with you. Have a chocolate chip cookie or two, maybe a sugar cookie. Have some coffee and, uh, and really get to know each other a little bit. It's designed mostly for folks that are newer to First United Methodist Church. We'll talk, answer things, show you around the campus, all that kind of stuff. Learn about how you might connect uh, uh, at a deeper level with First United Methodist Church. So come have coffee with me, cookies, all that kind of stuff. You can also, Pastor Amanda's back here. Um, you can have, uh, she on Tuesdays, she's, she's meeting with folks at Liberty Coffee House. I would encourage you at 10 o'clock, have coffee with her at Liberty Coffee House. I know she's probably already mentioned all this stuff earlier, but I just wanted to throw it out there again. God bless you guys, and God bless everything that's going to be happening at Basic Training Camp. I'm just so excited to see what God is doing and moving in this area. So we're going to, and I know you're going to come back next week. You're going to be exhausted, but we're going to be jumping up. We're going to be singing deep, deep wells, all that kind of stuff. Whatever the new thing is at Basic Training Camp, I know you've got it planned. So God bless you. Have a great week. Deep cries out, deep cries out to you, we cry out.